What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. So this past semester I finished a course called Analysis 2. This is the second analysis course available to undergraduates, but it was taught using this specific method called the Moore Method, which is something that I'd never really seen, experienced, or even heard of before. So I figured this would make an interesting video topic, and maybe we can spark some discussion in the comments below about this Moore Method. But if you've never heard of it before, I will put some resources in the description. But it's called the Moore Method, and it does have other names, by the way. Uh, Inquiry-based learning is one that I've seen that pretty much means the same thing. But we call it the Moore Method because it originated, it was made popular by this guy, Robert Lee Moore. And he was a topologist that taught, I think, in the early 1900s, so this has been around for a while. But this specific method he used is very student-led, right? The students lead the classroom. So instead of the more traditional teaching method where the instructor goes up, he gives definitions, he proves theorems, he does examples, and the students watch, it's very much so the opposite. The students are given definitions, they're given theorems, and they're asked to prove these theorems on their own without using outside resources, so no textbook and very little interaction with each other and then when the theorems are due, the students present the theorems on the board and they sort of, you know, learn from each other and critique each other a little bit. So it's very much so different than anything I had ever seen or experienced. And it feels like instead of being, you know, the passenger, like you kind of are in more traditional uh, math courses where they're more traditionally taught, you are actually the driver and you are responsible for your own learning and you're responsible for, you know, studying independently and learning things in your own way. So let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons. I'll start with the pros. So the first pro and probably the best thing about the Moore Method, honestly, is that it really promotes independent study. So like I said, each student is responsible for their own learning. And I think this is a really, really important skill to learn, whether you're going on to graduate school and continue your education, or whether you're going out to work in the workforce or in the industry or wherever it is, because it's really important to have this skill, right? If you're continuing your education as a graduate student and beyond, you need to be able to learn things independently. You need to be able to, whether it's pick up a textbook or take some definitions or sit and think about some theorems, you need to be able to do that because there's just not enough time in the classroom to spend. Your professor does not have enough time to hold your hand and walk you through everything. So you have to learn this skill and I think the Moore Method really, really, at least in my experience, has really taught me how to study independently and how to take definitions definitions and take theorems and really think about them, right? On the other hand, working in the industry, right, if you're going to be a banker or work for an insurance company or wherever it is, you need to be able to, you know, be given a set of instructions or maybe some uh, requirements or whatever it is and take those and think about how to solve the problem and then go solve it, right? And that's kind of the idea of the Moore method is that that's basically what you do. You're given definitions and you're given a theorem to prove and you're told to prove it, right? So it really is like the ultimate level of problem solving. I think that's a tool that's really useful whether you're going on to continue your education or whether you're going out to work in industry. So the second pro and the thing that I probably liked the most was the fact that students get to understand and learn things in their own way. And that was what I really struggled with when I took analysis one, so two semesters ago because it was taught in a more uh, traditional way, right? More lecture-based approach is that I would be given theorems and I would read theorems in the textbook and a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, I would read something and be like, wait, how did they get from that step to that step? Where is that coming from? What does this mean? Why did they use this, right? It was very hard to read and understand someone else's proof. And it was actually easier for me in this past semester using the Moore method to remember proofs because I did them on my own. I came up with them on my own. And when you come up with something on your own, you'll remember it. I promise you, you'll have a lot easier time at remembering it. And you won't feel like you're having to memorize something. You'll see it and you'll be like, oh yeah, I did this, this, and this. And I used this proof by contradiction. And I picked this to be my delta and that sort of thing. You'll remember stuff. So I feel like that's what's cool is that I get to think of things in my brain, how they make sense for me, right? And in the ways that make sense for me, I'm not relying on some textbook to explain a theorem or explain something to me. It's all in here because I figured it out and I've thought about it on my own and come up with ways that it makes sense for me to think about. So that's one thing I love about the Moore Method. That's what I really benefited from this past semester. 
All right, so another benefit from the Moore method is that the students get more of a sense of accomplishment than you would in a more traditional course. And the reason why, in my opinion, is because you're doing everything on your own. You know the work you're putting in. You know how much time you're putting in thinking about this class. So when you get that grade, when you ace that exam, when you get the 100 on your homework, whatever it is, you get more of a sense of accomplishment than you normally would because you know you did it all on your own. So that's another benefit from the Moore Method, and I think that's why a lot of students start to really, really enjoy the Moore Method, is because they get that sense of accomplishment, but more than they ever have before. And it starts to get addicting. You start to want to figure out the theorem the fastest. You want to present a perfect proof for the class. It, it does become, it, it's a fun kind of way to teach a class. It's a fun kind of way to take a class, in my opinion. But it does have its cons, which I'm going to talk about right now. So the first con, I would say, is that it's hard to get feedback. Right? So it's hard to tell whether what you're doing is fully correct or not because you never fully get a proof or a theorem worked out from your instructor. You're always seeing your classmates work or you're presenting your own work. So it's hard to say if your classmates work is 100% correct or not, right? So there were times when I would do a theorem and I would turn it in and I would get maybe a 70 or 80% on it. And then I would see a few classmates' theorems, and theirs weren't fully correct either. And then it was really hard for me to figure out, okay, how do I correct this and make it 100%, right? And a lot of times you really just have to utilize office hours. That's what I did, and I would just take it to the instructor's office and be like, hey, these are the steps I'm missing. I'm not sure how to make this fully correct. You really do have to put in that extra work. It's not going to be handed to you. The instructor's not going to put it up on the board and say, here's the correct way to do it, because that's the idea. There's not one correct way to do it. It's your correct way. It's your understanding of the correct way, right? So that's one thing that I could see that maybe could be improved is getting, being able to get more feedback. So another negative of the Moore Method is that you do not get to cover as much material as you would in a class that is taught in a traditional way. And the reason why is because there's just not enough time. When you're proving theorems from scratch on your own, it takes a lot of time, right? And we would maybe do two theorems per class, right? So there's not a lot of time for a bunch of uh, extra examples or exercises or to prove more theorems than maybe you would in a regular class when you just have to you know look at a textbook or that sort of thing it takes less time so that's one thing is that you don't get to cover quite as much material you don't get to hammer in on the exercises and the extra examples and that sort of thing uh, you just focus on the main theorems and you hit the real important stuff so another con of the Moore method is that you don't always know what you're proving, right? And the reason why is because the instructor gives definitions and gives theorems, right? And you're supposed to do everything on your own. But usually if your instructor is smart, they'll give definitions and theorems in a way where it makes it really hard to look it up on the internet, right? To find the right answer from an outside source because they don't want you to do that. So they usually will maybe change vocabulary words or they'll change the wording of a theorem or a definition, whatever it is, so that it makes it a lot harder for you to look it up uh, using an outside resource, which is a good thing because, again, you want to study independently, right? But it's also a bad thing because I remember like two weeks after I proved uh, Rolle's theorem, I was like, oh, wait, this is Rolle's theorem? And because he said something about it in class. So I had no idea that I had proved Rolle's theorem when, in fact, I had, right? Because it wasn't stated, this is Rolle's theorem. It was... Theorem number 64 or whatever it was, right? All the theorems are just numbers and the vocabulary you use is slightly different than you would probably normally find in a textbook. And again, the reason why is because they want to keep you from looking things up on the internet, from getting the answers. They want to really promote and, and sort of force you to do the work on your own and to push yourself to learn it on your own. So the last thing I'll say, and this isn't really a pro or a con, but I do think that the Moore Method is not for everybody. There are some people who just, they do better in the more traditional style classes, but then there are others who really excel and really fall in love with the Moore Method classes, right? So I think that's where it's tough, is that you're never going to be able to please everybody, because there are some students who prefer Moore Method, some who prefer the more traditional style. So you're just going to have to kind of pick with the one that you, as an instructor, thinks is best and, and stick to that. But I do think you could kind of meet halfway in the middle. And I do think that that kind of aligns with my teaching philosophy. And my philosophy is like, hey, I'll drag you a few steps, but then you need to take a few steps forward on your own. And then I'll drag you a little more, and then you gotta take a few steps on your own, right? I'm not gonna drag you through an entire course because you're not gonna learn, right? But I'm also not gonna make you trudge through an entire course because that's just, 
it's a little bit cruel, right? I gotta, I'm going to pull you in the right direction. I'm going to do my job as a teacher in helping you and guiding you. But I also expect a lot of work from the students, okay? So I think that there maybe can be a middle ground. There maybe can be somewhere in the middle between more method and between just straight up standing at the board and lecturing that involves, you know, both some guidance, some lecturing, some more feedback. I really think that is important. You got to give the feedback and make sure the students are they, they know they're doing the right thing. That's the biggest complaint I see from students who didn't like the more method is I couldn't tell if what I was doing was right or wrong, right? So I think there could be more feedback, but I do also think that there could be uh, more uh, allowing the students to think independently and allowing the students to come up with ideas and learn concepts and put them into their own words and, and learn them in the way that makes sense for them, okay? So if you've taken a class that's taught using the Moore method or a similar method, I'd like to hear your experience. Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't, then maybe you should become a math major. Maybe you can take some graduate level math courses and you'll most likely come along this teaching method because it is pretty popular, especially with the upper level math. There are a lot of instructors who think that this is the best way to teach. And I don't necessarily disagree. I think it's a pretty dang good way, but I think it can be modified a little bit to make it even better. So that's my experience. That's my opinion. That's the more method, and I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit like, and please leave me your comments with your feedback. Most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. My next video will be a bunch of limits, so stay tuned for the limits, and I'll see you all there.